Hi, today we're looking at Mark chapter 11, verses 27 to 33. Mark 11, 27 to 33. As usual, pause the video, have a read, and we'll chat. So Jesus is back to Jerusalem again. He's uh, come in, cleansed the temple, uh, 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 come in uh, on his way in again. He's, they've noticed the withered fig tree, you'll remember from yesterday. Uh, and so they come to Jerusalem and uh, after Jesus, yes, and the day before, has caused a splash by clearing the temple, uh, the chief priests and the teachers of the law um, are really out to get him. And uh, for the next chapter or so, uh, really, uh, we see that level of tension and their pursuit increase. Um, uh, so they come, first of all, uh, he's cleared the temple, they're not happy, and they've got a question for him. Uh, who gave you the right to, uh, to do this? Uh, see the question, by what authority are you doing these things? Uh, who gave you authority to do, to do this? Or you could imagine these days you might, um, uh, the question might be asked, who died and made you king of everything? Uh, or who made you the boss? Uh, is a question which uh, people of all ages, you hear it asked in the playground, you hear it asked in the workplace, you hear it asked everywhere, don't you? Who, who made you the boss? Who, who gave you the right to be able to say what you're saying, do what you're doing, especially uh, clearing the temple out, which he'd done the day before. Uh, they really want him to admit that he's not got the right, he's not got the authority, so then they're thinking that he can get rid of them. They can get rid of him. Um, sorry. Uh, but Jesus, as usual with this, uh, Jesus really rarely asks a question, uh, answers a question. He often answers a question by asking another one. And this is what he does this time. He, uh, he, he reverses their trap. Uh, uh, Answer, answer one question, and I'll, I'll give you my answer. Uh, John's baptism, was it from heaven or from men? Tell me. And uh, as we see, they're in a bind. Um, they can't say it's from heaven, because then they'll, Jesus will be able to say, well, why didn't you actually believe what he said, rather than uh, you know, ignore him and try to get rid of him yourself? And they can't say it's from people, From it, it was just a human thing, it wasn't from God at all, because... They know how popular John was and how, uh, how, much, how much the people thought that John had been sent by God. And if they just say, oh, it was just a human thing, then they'll be in trouble from the people. And you notice that they feared the people, for everyone else held that Jesus was a prophet. So when it comes to their answer, they just give up. They don't answer. Uh, uh, very often we'll we'll know when we've been asked a question or we've asked a question of someone uh, and they know that the answer, the true answer won't benefit them or get them in trouble. And so they say, what do they say? I'm, <coughs> I'm not sure. Or, I won't answer. <coughs> Excuse me. Or as they say here, we don't know. Uh, they actually do have an answer which they think is true, but they know that answer won't benefit them. And if it doesn't matter... And uh, rather than just answering the question truthfully, uh, they're already trying to uh, uh, analyse their answer. What answer will work for us? What answer will get us what we want? It's interesting here, they're not particularly interested in the truth or in answering truthfully. They're, they're interested in answering in such a way as to uh, Im embed and entrench their power and to help them get what they want. And that's generally not a very good way of conducting our lives is or, to, or conducting any kind of relationships uh, not to be thinking about all our answers in terms of what will get what I want or what will uh, what will manip how can I manipulate the situation to get what I want uh, or what answer will benefit benefit me um, uh, as people who follow Jesus the correct way to think about a question is the answer that benefits me is the answer which is true and whether that is initially costly or does not help me get what I want that's beside the point, isn't it? Uh, to answer truthfully uh, rather than uh, an answer with an agenda in mind is always much better. Unfortunately, Jesus' enemies here, uh, uh, Jesus knew their agenda and they know their agenda. And that's why they say they don't know. And so Jesus says, well, if you can't answer my question, I won't answer yours either. And uh, as we'll see next time, he manages, he, he goes on to say and goes on to tell a parable, which is really uh, quite a confronting parable for the chief priests and teachers of the law. We'll see that next time. 
so he doesn't, having escaped their trap this time, uh, he doesn't kind of think, phew, escaped that trap, I better go, I'll, I'll, I'll be less confrontational next time. He, no, he goes in harder, uh, as we'll see. But today, I want us to take notice that Jesus does have the power. He is, he is the king, um, despite what the, the, his opponent's question was. But also the fact that um, to answer questions truthfully, even if it's costly to us, is always better. And is always, uh, it's always the way, what God wants us to do, to be truthful in our speech. Not to be manipulative, not to be trying to uh, uh, make the situ- work, work the situation in our favour, and certainly not to be analysing answers uh, for, their, uh, for their usefulness to our cause, instead of for their truthfulness and honesty in our response. Let's pray about that. Heavenly Father, do thank you uh, for the example, uh, the example Jesus gives us and for his authority to do the things he did. Please help us to um, be truthful in our relationships and honest, not to be thinking about our answers in terms of what will uh, give us more power or what will uh, help us achieve our aims, but instead what will be most truthful and most honest in all our relationships. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you next time.